Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mutual Knowledge. I am Gautier Lamotte, your host, and today I am with Shane Vogt from Messari. Hi, Shane. How's it going? Um, I'm absolutely thrilled and happy to have somebody from Messari here, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a very interesting conversation. So, first of all, how did you come in contact with the blockchain industry? Was Messari the first uh, the first uh, company you worked for, or did you come in contact with this industry, uh, you know, by other means? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my like crypto origin story actually starts with uh, sort of like all the uh, the uh, the meme coin era, like when uh, when the sort of the GameStop and the AMC that whole uh, when all that went down and like you know it was kind of a fun. I know there's like sort of like a Netflix documentary documentary that they put together based on that at this point, but. Uh, when that all that went down, I kind of, you know, I was, you know, texting with buddies about it and, you know, you know, got in on Robinhood. And when they shut down the trading, that was like a, a point in time when I was like, you know, kind of like, what the heck is going on here? And that sort of was a bridge to, you know, getting into the crypto space where, you know, you know, an area where you, it's sort of like untouchable. There's no way for like, uh, you know, a company to like, just like sort of shut down trading because they decided to. Um, so that's kind of how I was just sort of like onboarded onto like, you know, just Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then that sort of led into like my interest in NFTs. Um, so I was really, really kind of in the mix with, uh, the NFT space, uh, you know, in the height of like 2021. And then, uh, I was sort of just working in regular industry as an accountant and, uh, I joined a Pomp Academy, which is a sort of an onboarding class for people that are curious about getting into the. The crypto industry and that led me to you know day one there was a you know a listing for accounting manager position at Masari and I applied and, and here we are today so <laughs> so how, how long has it been since uh, since you started at Masari it'll be two years uh, in April so Wonderful. it's been a heck of a ride it's been uh, it, it, you know I'm extremely happy it's been uh, an extremely rewarding experience for sure I know I, I'm a faithful user of Masari's reports myself I consume that weekly in order to, uh, you know, have news from the industry and notably reports. And how do you guys organize your workflow in order to, first of all, uh, sort all the information that is coming to you? Because I assume you guys have to decide every week what kind of information is going to make it to the newsletter. So how is it? How, it's interesting for our listeners to know what's a good information for an industry report. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I actually, it's like, to be honest, I don't have too much insights into that, to be honest. I'm, I, so I've, uh, I basically run the accounting department. Um, so that those decisions are made by sort of like our, you know, analysis team. Um, but I will say that, you know, they're, they're, you know, all of our anal analysts are, you know, just in the details on Twitter, on, on Discord, you know, and sort of using these like decentralized uh, socials that exist today. Um, so kind of, they're just like, really have like their, you know, finger on the pulse of the industry. And, uh, uh, in terms of the actual data, that's sort of, uh, you know, being pulled in from, you know, various sources. And then the way that they sort of pull it together is a combination, I think even to this day of some AI tools and obviously just like our, you know, the, the brilliant minds of the analyst, I'm sorry. All right. And so now let's dwell into your specialty. Let's talk GAAP, so generally accepted <laughs> accounting practices, um, because that's that's really a huge topic. Um, how mature do you think the the corporate world is regarding and, and you know the regulation is uh, in order to take that into account? Say I'm a company. Uh, what's the advice you would give to a person starting a business willing to accept cryptocurrencies or you know to use uh, these technologies? How should these persons think in order to implement cryptocurrencies into their their own business? Yeah, so, sure. I mean, so in terms of just like gap, right? Like, there's you know we're obviously very early in terms of like how uh, crypto will be treated. Although just this past year there was a, a new uh, you know FASB update that uh, will require some cryptocurrencies to be booked at fair value, which I think is a really great step in the in the right direction. Um, there's certainly like uh, you know, for, for coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's obviously very active markets where uh, a fair market value can be determined at any point in time. Um, previously, uh, crypto is supposed to be recorded at cost. 
Um, so this is a big uh, this is a big change that will um, impact all of, you know companies that have crypto on their uh, books going forward. And I think that's a positive step. I think there will be continued to be iterations of uh, you know accounting standards that kind of uh, better reflect the you know the way that uh, crypto should be actually held on on balance sheets and the way that's um, you know recorded in financials in general. Um, in terms of companies that they're sort of like looking to get into the you know, add you know, crypto as an option for payment. Um, I mean, I think they're, I mean, it's still just sort of like uncharted territories, um, but certainly consulting your your, your own accountants um, is a great first step. And knowing, uh, one thing too to know is that like, you know, sort of every every swap, every transaction is sort of taxable in the moment that it's done. So that's like a big thing to be aware of as well. Mm, fascinating. And so that's quite interesting here, because that means that uh, if I get you correctly, the industry is getting mature enough to be in a, a healthy relationship with the standard corporate world. So that means that more people are likely to to use this tech now that there's this legal framework, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that was a huge like that. That was a huge step in the right direction to, uh, you know, make this, you know, and that's it's, it's finalized. So uh, early adopters will be able to reflect crypto as in fair value on their financial statements beginning in the 2023 year, and then it will be effective for everyone uh, year end 2024. Um, so, so yeah, that's a huge that's a huge step in the right direction for crypto, in my opinion. So that's interesting for the United States, and uh, I can imagine many many other countries will follow. And how's it going when? Um, Basically, a business is contracting with other businesses from other jurisdictions. Is uh, do you think the legal framework could be imp um, improved here, or that you know the the accounting practices could change? Um, because there are sometimes worldwide, you know, money transfers, and sometimes it can be uh, quite challenging in terms of KYC. For example, if you're contracting with an entity in El Salvador or uh, in Somalia or in Malaysia, your bank could ask um, an extensive KYC process. Uh, how does the, the, the fiscal administration in the US react um, if there's a, a transaction in cryptocurrencies? Um, is the account, um, how does the, um, does the accounting change if this comes from another country, for example? Yeah, it's interesting because there's this sort of this like conflict between sort of like anonymity and an enemy and the sort of legal framework, like being able to like, you know, know who your customers are. Um, it is interesting. Like, I, I think we still, um, I think generally you still want to like, have, like the, the anonymous customer is sort of a challenging, like we, we do want to like try to actually have like locate based on, you know, all these legal frameworks that already exist. We do want, you know, with customers like, even if they're able to pay in crypto, but we do want to know where they're at for various legal reasons. Um, so that is going to be a challenge always the way that like sort of the crypto space that, uh, you know, in areas where you really want to like stay completely anonymous and interact with sort of the regular corporate world. That's a, that's just a big challenge that I think will continue to people will, uh, sort of debate and argue over. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, there, there's very good, I, in my opinion, there, I know there's like, you know, you know, crypto maximalists that think that you should you want to be off the grid, but I think there are very good reasons why we need to have pretty basic info about a customer. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting how that sort of conversation de develops, but yeah, it, currently we, you know, we like to have some sort of info just for various legal reasons, for sure. Quite interesting. And it's, yeah, it's always something, uh, worth to note that the the cryptocurrency the blockchain community is quite um well it's quite separated between two very different schools of thought one of them is really thinking no we have to keep the original cypherpunk spirit and uh and be ungovernable and untrackable and some others are saying yeah but it has to become mainstream so please buy more of that etf blackrock and and please get, feed me more kyc so We'll see what the future holds. And yeah. are there, oh, sorry, sorry, what I was to say? Yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think there's just like a world where sort of like both can exist, right? Where there's sort of like, uh, you know, there's sort of like the mainstream kind of normie version of crypto where, you know, it's all kind of pretty similar, but everyone's able to like transact more efficiently and, uh, 
that everyone's happy with that. And then if you want to just be like kind of in the mountains off the grid completely, then there's, you know, that's also available. And um, those people are very educated and know how to do that. So um, I think both options are available. Indeed, indeed. And do you think that's going to be two separate technologies? For example, some people are going to use a few cryptocurrencies for the mainstream world and a few others for, um, you know, something a bit off the grid, not necessarily something shady or, or illegal, right. but basically just as we use cash as a commodity these days. Uh, or do you think that is go there's going to be a separation and, and another type of separation and that will not be a separation of currencies, but a separation of practices where people will use the same currency, but not in the same context, um, like two wallets, for example, in China, sometimes when citizens do, uh, do not want to be uh, spied on by the government, they have two phones uh so do, what what do you think it will look like as an accountant yeah sure i think i think uh like you know certain you know various coins offer various different solutions right so there are certain uh coins that really uh place an emphasis on the privacy component of things um so i think the market will just sort of like play out that way like that certain tools are kind of more based on privacy than others so um Yeah, I mean, that's what's cool is there's always just like new projects that are popping up all the time. And even, you know, the, the, the products that exist today are very interesting. Obviously, it's on a sliding scale from, from you know, the most private to kind of more public or um, even something like a CBDC. It's obviously like, you know, not, not a, uh, you know, on the furthest end of, uh, you know, lacking any privacy. Um, so, so, yeah, I think there will just be like product, you know, we'll, we'll see how kind of the markets, uh, it, you know, change over time but i think pro just the the products themselves like the type of person that you are you'll be you know you'll gravitate towards certain coins interesting and that's why i like your practical approach because we all know that there are things that are basically kind of the of the grid but tolerated by Uh, by the power in place in every country because it it's a victimless crime and so there you know it's interesting because in France we have such a huge level uh, such a high level of bureaucracy that sometimes I've been advised by uh, the equivalent of um, of our IR, um, our own mm. French IRS uh, I've been advised sometimes by people there um, to just not declare Uh, uh, parts of my revenue and they told me yes but that sir we don't care about it like okay uh, don't don't pay the tax do not declare it don't worry and if we control you uh, that's that's not even worth a penalty so don't declare that declare that because you will need that money to pay for another tax so we know it and we always close our eyes when this happens so don't worry about it and your accountant knows so i don't know if th this happens in the u.s uh, at the same scale but but because In France, bureaucracy is national sport. So, <laughs> but <laughs> I was gonna say that's a little. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of gray there. But if that's if uh, if that's advice from your accountants, then uh, yeah, it's a little bit more of a. Uh, you know, there's a lot more of a middle ground. No, not not from the accountant, from the from the tax uh, the tax office oh, uh, <laughs> state employee, from There the state employee yeah, himself to, to me. Oh, you know, sir, that that would be too complete. We know that it would be too complicated. So I, I kind of like the humanity, actually, of the of that person, right. basically. Being able to tell me to tell me, you know, I don't make the laws, and I know that businesses sometimes cannot survive if they abide by the laws. So please, do not declare your victimless crimes. We we're not going to come after you. So maybe there will be some things like uh, like that in the future. I don't know, <laughs> But with cryptocurrencies, I mean. Yeah, that's interesting. I, the yeah, I would say like in the I think the U.S. is a lot more like I would uh, you know. A lot more strict in terms of like whatever the tax code is, and uh, you know we should we should abide by that. But that's fine. I mean that's the thing too, right? The different countries have different perspectives on these things. So. Um, and then again, yeah. your your fiscal pressure is so uh, is lower than other countries. So that's uh, that's also this also explains that maybe. And okay, and so speaking, you were speaking of uh, of interesting projects. Speaking of that, um, are there projects that uh, that you found worthy of in, of interest that you found interesting um, that hold a, a nice, a promising potential for the business world, for the corporate world? Yeah, sure. I mean, this like it sounds kind of boring, but like just even like USDC is like really awesome. I mean, the, in the way that you're able to just like transact in USD in a way like on the blockchain um, for businesses, um, it's very. It's I mean, you can get you can get an invoice out and payment in five minutes, 
and you're, you know, you have uh, custody of those assets that like, that's a like pretty incredible piece of technology where, you know, if you send out a, you know, I guess bank wires have somewhat of an equivalence, but they're more expensive and they, uh, you know, uh, so have certain time limits. I mean, the specifically for business, being able to transact in USDC is just like, I think uh, just going to continue to be a big, like, I just think that's like an incredible piece of technology. Wonderful. And do you think that's going to uh, to become a standard uh, and replace the previous one? I I have colleagues at Web3 Enabler basically telling me, ah, you know, cryptocurrencies are uh, and crypto payments are going to be so mainstream that using your credit card or you know wiring money, um, uh, classic money transfers are going to be as obsolete as uh, uh, licking a stamp and mailing a check is obsolete now. Um, is that your stance as well, or do you think there will be hurdles or many reasons to keep both systems at the same time? I guess the, like, like over time, I think it's probably going to be one of those things where it's sort of just like a lot of, even people that don't even know about crypto, maybe it just sort of happens in the background and they're not even aware of it. Um, but certainly, like once, you, once you've experienced this, right, once you've, again, like I said, like, you know, sent out an invoice and then the customer responded with a, you know, crypto transaction five minutes later and you have custody of that asset already, it's pretty, like, it's incredible. Um, so... I think in a way, and, and with that, and the, the fees as well, right, compared to like the traditional banking system. Um, so, I mean, like, there, the, like, once there's more mainstream adoption, which I think is, you know, happening as we've seen, seen with like the Bitcoin ETF, and, uh, you know, that's a very recent thing. It's going to be exciting to see like how things go this year with that. Um, but yeah, I think there's just like this slow creep towards, uh, you know, creeping into the mainstream in a way that some people probably don't even realize. All right. And last question, uh, as a professional accountant, what um, what do you think are the most common mistakes for a business when interacting with cryptocurrencies? Not not in terms of investment or in terms of technicality, but in terms of accounting and legal framework. What what are the you know what is the avoidable mistake that that you know it's it would be tempting to do because because of a lack of knowledge for example yeah sure that's gosh i wish i could have like something really great for you to tell um the i don't know i guess the i guess you certainly if you're a business that's like curious or interested in implementing like sort of like crypto payment rails um i would say just like consult like consult somebody that that is uh familiar with the industry before you do so um i don't i don't think like i i don't think there's too much there right it's the you know the if you if things are uh set up pro again like so let's say you're like transacting you're collecting invoice receipts in usdc um there's not too much different than collecting in cash other than um just kind of making sure that the uh you know that i mean you have the law you have the ledger so you're gonna know like all those things so i think it's actually kind of an easier way to um, track payments in like a traditional system um, so, yeah. You know, I'm delighted to hear that because that means that, you know, this, uh, these uh, beloved technologies are getting, you know, well known. And that means that we can use that and that there's a, that, that shows that there's a less shady reputation and that it becomes respectable uh, in the eyes of a few institutions. So that's quite pleasant. Thank you so much, Shane, for this very cool rundown on you know the 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 evolution of the uh, the practices and uh, uh what life is like at messery any last word oh yeah this is really fun uh thanks for having me nice to meet you thanks shane thank you everyone this was shane vault from messery and i was good i am good Mood, your host and this was mutual knowledge podcast like share subscribe follow us on every platform links in the description bye everyone